Hey guys, what's going on? So it is dusk and I am on a pretty cool trail uh, out here enjoying some of the brisk autumn air. And I got a really cool bike to show you guys. It is the F35X from BPM Imports. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so the F35X, you can kind of imagine a little X right there. <laughs> the F35X from BPM Imports is an electric bike that has uh, a lot of fixings on it, a lot of pretty cool features for a fairly bargain price. Now there are some trade-offs here and there, but as we walk through the bike, you'll kind of see some of them stand out and you can judge for yourself if it's something that sticks out to you or if it's something that you're okay with using. Uh, so the bike, as you can see, is a dual suspension fat tire electric bike got suspension up here you got suspension back there fat tires 26 by 4 on both sides and of course it's an electric bike that has the battery built in right here in this case a 48 volt 14 amp hour and a fairly hefty motor a bafong 30 750 watt motor sorry 750 watt motor some of the mechanical features are you know a little bit entry level uh, particularly the derailleur is a Shimano Tourney. The brakes are a disc brake and they got some pretty good rotors, a 180 in the front, 160 in the back, but they are a mechanical system. Uh, I would prefer if they were hydraulic on this particular bike, mostly because of the weight. The weight of this bicycle is about 75 pounds. Uh, I measured it exactly and you can check out the full specs on electricbikereview.com if you want to see the weight of the bicycle, the weight of the battery alone, and everything else. But let's go ahead and walk through the bike uh, piece by piece and you can kind of to check out check out all the parts for yourself so starting up front like i like to do is a 26 by 4 tire these are kind of juggernaut that are kind of standard on a lot of uh, fat tire electric bikes because they're pretty good performers you can get these from all the way down to 5 psi up to 30. i usually rock them pretty high myself because i do a fair amount of road riding before i finally get to the trail then i can let out a little bit of air <laughs> when i want to get fun uh, so in this case, they have a fairly good tread pattern on them, uh, which is nice for the off-road here, but it's also somewhat smooth. You know, it's not super thick, so you're not going to wear it out if you ride it on the road, because that's what happens. Like, you can ride thick uh, knobs on the road. They just wear out really quick. Uh, so in this case, they're kind of shaved down a little bit, so you kind of save yourself that worry there. Uh, up on the front, I did mention the 180 millimeter rotor on the mechanical disc brake. It's pretty good that they have a fairly good sized rotor uh, on the disc brake here. Um, and this is the mechanical system. These are a Tektro Ares uh, for the mechanical disc brakes. And of course, mechanical disc brakes are pretty much a standard for electric bikes. There's a handful of lightweight bikes that can kind of get away with uh, doing some caliper brakes or the, what you kind of see is called the cantilever brakes or the old style. Um, but Hydraulic, or sorry, <laughs> disc brakes of any sort are pretty much standard for electric bikes, including this one. Uh, so up on the front, you do have a uh, front fork from Mozo. Uh, so the stanchions on these are 31.2. That means a thickness um, right here on this part. Now, this is a steel fork, and that kind of contributes to the weight of it. Most of the weight, honestly, is in <laughs> pretty heavy battery pack, uh, as well as just carrying all the fat tire, uh, everything. Uh, because in this case you have a fairly wide um, front hub spacing. This is wide to accommodate the width of the front tire. Uh, and as well you have extra space up here, like on the fork. Uh, right along here you have some extra space, so that's some extra weight um, that you have on the bike carrying it around. Um, so, a fairly straight head tube uh, right up here that kind of pokes out a little bit coming up into uh, the stem. Uh, so the stem has a little bit of an extension to it, so you can in my case, I actually have this set fairly low, uh, so the seat is kind of in its lowest position. Handlebars are a little high. I like that personally when I'm riding around on a bike like this. It makes it a lot of fun. So you can kind of deck this out to be sort of a cruiser bike if you want it to. Um, something that feels really plush, and it absolutely does. I can tell you that with certainty. <laughs> Between the, the tires that are really cushy and have a lot of uh, flex to them, you also have the suspension system there, and when you get a fairly plush uh, seat and the handlebars kind of riding up a little higher, it makes for a pretty soft ride, all things considered. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about the stem. Uh, the handlebars, fairly standard issue, nothing too amazing uh, on the handlebars. They are made of an aluminum, so that's not adding to the weight of the total bicycle. Um, these are the mechanical handles or levers for the mechanical disc brake. Uh, they do have an electric cutoff signal that sends a little signal to the motor to stop powering when you pull on them. 
So that's a pretty cool safety feature that it sends the cutoff signal to the motor. It's fairly standard issue on a lot of electric bikes, but um, in this case, it's very uh, needed, I would say. Because you have a mechanical disc brake system on a bike that's very heavy and potentially going very fast, uh, it's nice to have all the safety features that you can get in that realm for stopping the bike. But another pretty cool thing about this, I don't want to get too far into the electric system, is that one reason I came out at dusk is so that you could see the lights. Uh, so this is actually a brake light. So let me just go ahead and walk over to the other side. You'll see me grab on this handle here. And then, shabams, brake light. Pretty cool. I was trying for a little bit to, tr to turn on the lights <laughs> using the display, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I went on the road, and then I figured it out <laughs> when I got here. So fun stuff. Uh, brake lights are always pretty fun uh, to see functioning on an electric bike. I've seen many many companies try it out years ago, and it seems like they finally figured out how to get it going right uh, in this case, too. Uh, so to continue on with some of the mechanical equipment, I don't want to get too far into the electric quite yet. Uh, it has a fairly low uh, sweep to the top tube right here. Starts out pretty high and let's see, starts out pretty high and then swoops down a little bit low. So what you have is about a 30 inch um measurement from the top of the head sorry top of the top tube to the floor so that's your standover height right here the seat is actually in its lowest well i think it can go a tiny bit lower uh lowest position but the thing is that the seat post itself kind of spears down past this point and comes into contact with the shock now that's actually not that strange it's not that out of the ordinary it's fairly common for companies to send out a seat post that's long and then if the user wants to they can trim it to be a little bit shorter and that's standard i mean people do that all the time myself included in this case when you have it by default because of course i'm not going to muck this up by any degree you have a pretty high uh, minimum seat height if you choose not to trim the seat post tube um, but of course, if you need to go ahead and do it, these seat post tubes are fairly easy to replace, even if you do uh, by some means break it. Uh, but you have a quick release collar, which is pretty nice. Uh, the seat is actually a little more plush than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting something a little more thin and athletic, but in this case, I was pleasantly surprised with something that has a little bit more of a width for the platform, about seven inches wide uh, for the footprint on this seat. So that gives it much more of the kind of, like I said, plush or like cruiser style riding something you could totally do with this bike uh, so continuing on this bike has just one set of metal um, I guess you could call these the chain stays because the chain is kind of on it or the seat stays <laughs> those are like the, the make up the triangle on a traditional sense but in this case there's just these one big pieces of metal I think this is a large part of the weight on here but they designed it this way uh, for a couple of things number one it's easier to get the motor on and off because you don't have to deal with so many uh, pieces of metal that you got to fish around uh, but also, you can accommodate the rear suspension. Uh, so right here is the Kind Shock rear suspension. It's, it says it's a 260. I couldn't quite figure out how tall it is, like the um, travel of the fork. A lot of times a fork can be, or sorry, a, a suspension can be uh, measured um, by both measuring from the two eyelets to see how far they go when it's fully compressed. And I'll do that a lot of times for an air shock. In this case, it's a coil shock that's adjustable. You can actually spin this little dial to kind of dial in where you want the suspension to be, if you want a little more stiff or if you want a little more soft. In this case, I just left it in the default, default position and it feels pretty cush. I like it. I got nothing to complain about there. Um, but yeah, this is the rear suspension for it that definitely activates. And you'll see a little bit more of that when I take it on a little road test. Um, and I'll point the camera down in this direction. You'll kind of see that flex a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the drive system uh, or the mechanical drive system. Uh, you got, of course, you got a Wellgo metal pedal uh, that is pretty cool. And you have 170 millimeter crank on both sides, of course. This is a 42 tooth chain ring on the front. And that's pretty neat because it has little guards on both sides to kind of protect your pants, uh, which is you know, a nice addition for a bike like this, where if it's a cruiser and you're gonna throttle around or if it's off-road and maybe you're wearing pants when you go off-road, I am today, so. Uh, so that is the front chain ring coming along the chain, of course. This is a 14 to 28 tooth uh, Shimano cassette. Uh, of course coming into the shimano tourney so that's you know somewhat bottom shelf on the shimano line but nonetheless it is a shimano um and it does have that name brand with it 
here's a little guard uh, for the derailleur. Uh, a lot of times it's for shipping. In this case, it might come in handy if I intend to bash it around a little bit more than I should. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is, for the most part, the mechanical system. I think we've covered just about everything. So let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. Uh, now with the electric system, uh, one of the highlights, let me go ahead and shift this around a little bit, is the motor. So this is a rear hub motor from Bafong, and this is a 750 watt uh, nominal motor. The peak output, I don't know, maybe around a thousand or so, uh, but it's no slouch. This motor uh, is fairly popular. You see it on a lot of different bikes and Bafong has really made a name for themselves in the electric bike industry. They were fairly uh, unheard of a few years ago, but now they are definitely bringing up a lot of contenders. So uh, don't balk if you think Bafong is not a name you've heard, because I can tell you with confidence that it's, it's a good motor. <laughs> but of course, a motor is only as good as the bike that it's put on. It's an ingredient in this dish. Uh, so let's examine some of the other parts. Uh, the controller is actually down in here. I don't know for certain, but I want to say the controller feels to me like it's putting out about 25 amps or so. I know it's really hard for me to kind of make that guess, but the controller is built down into this little spot. So you could access it if you wanted to. It is obstructed a little bit by the chain ring, but this stuff with some specialized bike tools pops right off and it's not too tough if for some reason you needed to change the controller. I don't know if that's really going to be a thing for you. You'd have to ask BPM Imports, um, but they are uh, a company here in the United States, so you could totally call them up and see if you need something. Uh, right past here, I don't know if you can see it, is the Cadence Based Pedal Assist system. So that's a 12 magnet cadence sensor. And what that does is that when you go up to the display, and I'll show you that in a sec, when you pedal the bike and you have the display set for level one pedal assist, we'll say, then it's counting the rotations of the crank of this part here. It's counting the rotations of that and giving out power from the motor um, based on that information. So that way you don't have to hit the button or twist a throttle. You can just use the pedals in order to engage the electric motor. And if you crank up that level a little bit higher, it just gives you more energy based on the same movement. So with that, it's actually not tied to a torque system. So in this case, you could be in a totally loose mechanical gear and then just rotate the pedals as a formality and the electric motor will push you along. And it's pretty fun. If you haven't tried it, totally should. Um, so uh, the battery. So the battery is fairly unique in a couple of ways. Uh, it does occupy the center of the bike. So it's right there built in between the top tube and the down tube. And of course, it's definitely made for that frame. <laughs> Very specifically fits into that spot. So it has kind of like this little moto Kind of motif to it where the battery kind of occupies a space that might be um, also occupied on a gas bike by some of the engine parts or perhaps a gas tank. In this case it's holding a Samsung battery. Uh, they have a couple of options from uh, BPM imports 48 volt 14 amp hours or 48 volt 10.4 amp, amp hours. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you how that works. Uh, so this bike actually has um, two locks but one key. Well I guess it comes with two keys but um, the one key works on two locks that you need to open in order to get the motor, or sorry, the battery off. So in that case, I opened up the one towards the front. Let's go to the one in the back, put it in there, twist it. And now I can get the battery out. So I'll go ahead and, oh, this is a lot easier with the other hand. Ugh, switch. Okay. So it's not the most, uh, not the easiest thing to get on this handle down in there. There we go. Got the handle up, but then the handle is kind of obstructed by the other part of the frame. So you just kind of got to dive in and wedge it out of here. Let's go ahead. It's nice and snug. All right, there we go. Boom. They actually see right through the bike. Uh, so this is the battery pack. Uh, in this case, 48 volt, 14 amp hours. Um, it's not terribly heavy. It feels like it's holding about 50 cells or something like that. Um, but you have all your terminals in here that are fairly protected. You know, not a whole lot going to get in there. Um, cause that's, I don't know what kind of crash you would do in order to get debris inside of that. <laughs> and, you know, you know, heaven help you if that happens. Uh, the battery, the battery case is pretty cool. It fits into this spot, but there are a couple of nuances to it that, uh, looks like they got a little bit of ironing out to do. Uh, one of them is this handle. So the handle is pretty cool to carry it around with, but as you saw, it's not really all that useful for using the handle to pull the battery out. And in this case, with the handle up, it actually doesn't even fit inside of the casing. So you gotta get that handle down, no big deal. Put it back in. And then let's switch hands, get the keys. All right, of course you do the back one first, I've learned. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna blow anything up or anything, but let's make sure it's nice and snug. 
Okay, got the back one in. The reason I say the back first is because this key up front um, not only puts a little pin to physically lock it into position, which is pretty cool, it's nice and secure in there, uh, also you need to turn that key into the on position and it is required for ignition on the vehicle. So it's not going to go anywhere electrically until you have the key in here. Uh, so that's one thing that's you know not my favorite part about it because I got somewhat long legs. My knees don't come into contact with this. However, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a little uh, hesitant on having all of my keys dangle there. So if you wanted this bike as a commuter, which I don't know if you wanted to do that, there are provisions for mounting fenders on both the front and the back, uh, FYI. Not a rack. You probably couldn't get a rack on this thing. That'd be really tough unless it just mounted to the seat post and that's it. But um, so I don't know if you'd be carrying like, you know, your locker keys or your house keys or something like that on here. So, you know, that might not be a big deal after all. Um, but continuing on with the electric system, we got it uh, plugged in in the ignition. Uh, let's go ahead and press the M button on the bottom of the little remote and it'll boot up and show us a couple things. Uh, so here's your speed in big letters, your odometer up in the top right. Uh, your pedal assist level is down in the lower left. Uh, now let's go ahead and press that button. So it looks like there's level one pedal assist, and then there is two, which they call eco mode, and then three for STD, which I can only assume means standard. Power is number four, and then speed for number five. And then that's it. And then you scroll all the way down. It does have a walk mode, which is rather redundant with the throttle. You know, perhaps that's a European thing. So it does have a walk mode if you press and hold the minus button. Pressing and holding the plus button actually just resets your average speed, your max speed, things like that, that you can scroll through. Um, so I was wondering, you know, I kind of mentioned it earlier. I was kind of wondering a little bit about how to engage the lights. Uh, this one is a brake light, so that's how you do that one. This one actually just has a battery on the inside. Let's go ahead and press that one. So it doesn't have any wires coming around it. It's just battery powered, so it does come with a battery. I don't know what size, um, but it seems to be operating at a fairly low voltage. So it'll last for a long time, I would hope. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's see. And that's pretty much it for the display. It's a fairly simple system. Uh, pressing the power button will, of course, scroll through some of the parameters there. Uh, so yeah. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go for a ride on the F35X. It's going to be fun stuff. I have the seat fairly low. That way you'll be able to see some of the controls a little bit better. But more importantly, that's how I want to ride because I'm going to be using the throttle uh, quite a bit. It just occurred to me, I talked about the pedal assist, but I didn't really mention the twist throttle uh, when I was going over there uh, on the electrical specifications. But here it is, a throttle. So let's go ahead and turn on the headlight. Seems like a compliance thing, so now I can say I have a headlight. <laughs> let's go ahead. So let's see if we can find a fun trail. So this trail that I'm on is, you know, fairly low low impact. You know, I would not classify this as a hard trail in the least by a long shot. Um, and that's pretty good for what we're doing here today because we're just testing out a little electric bike, kind of uh, getting our sea legs a little bit. And yeah, let's see. I definitely do prefer the throttle on the bike. You know, pedaling is, it's fun. You know, I like it a lot, but I gotta say I prefer just kind of hanging out and doing using the throttle. So if you're in one of those European countries that doesn't allow a throttle, then, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say that uh, I've completely tested the bike for that specific purpose. Because, <laughs> by golly, the throttle is a lot of fun. Let's get through some of the thick stuff. Hopefully I can get into something a little wet, you know. And then we can kind of show off the fat tiredness of it all. Yeah, here we go. Here's a little wetness. I get a little slimy. Just a tiny bit. Just enough to get the wheels nice and slick. There we go. Full speed. Okay. Can I do a little bit of a circle here? So, yeah, on the F35X, I'm kind of, I'm a little tall. You know, I'm six feet tall and I have a 34 inch inseam. So I'm kind of pressing back a little bit on the rear of the seat um, when I'm using it in throttle mode to kind of uh, get my balance a little bit better uh, while I'm riding the bike. But then if I want to scoot forward and pedal, yeah, you definitely can. Um, there we go. <laughs> That's fun. So one thing I forgot to mention, let's kind of do that circle again. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention about the bike, let's go ahead and stand up and get some thickness out of it. 
One thing I forgot to mention was that the bike has a programmable top speed. I think it comes by default with a 20 mile an hour top speed, but it is user programmable. Like you can go in the settings. If you press and hold the plus and minus button, that will take you into the settings where you can change the wheel size or you can change from kilometers to miles. Um, you can also change the uh, top speed. Top speed, of course, on that little display. <laughs> top speed is uh, shown in kilometers for some reason. So when you change the top speed, you want to change it to 40 kilometers an hour or so, which is a little bit around 25 miles an hour um, if you want to change it there. One thing that we get a lot on electricbikereview.com um, in the comment section for YouTube or some of the comments or forum on our website is that people will say, hey, I saw that pretty cool, you know, $500,000 bike or <laughs> something. When are you going to review something at a more reasonable price point? Uh, and we do. And this is one of them. You know, it's not the most fancy thing, but it can do it. Oh, yes. A <laughs> little bit of momentum. Get that even steep part. So. Yeah, this is one of those bikes. It's not, you know, super downhill, but it can do some fairly, you know, it can do a lot of stuff. Even a little bit of equipment, like you see on this bike, can access a lot of fun stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and switch the perspective a little bit. We will round this up and take it home. All right, guys, we've got a pretty good vantage point in which you can see the pedals all the way at the forward end of the crank. Uh, as well, the controllers down here, you see the front chain ring. Uh, you can also kind of see the uh, suspension there and the gearing and the motor, most importantly. So we're gonna go ahead and crank it up to level five pedal assist and you can see what it does. That was kind of fun. Hopefully you guys got to see the uh, suspension compress a little bit as I was going over a couple of those bumps. <laughs> Very cushy. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the review of the F35X from BPM Imports. It's been a lot of fun kind of going on the trail and exploring some new spots. So yeah, if you want to check out the full written review for this bike, including a lot of bullet points for pros and cons, uh, as well as all the measurements and specifications for this bike, as well as many, many others, go to electricbikereview.com. While you're there, you can participate in the forums and kind of be active in the community if you want to post a question or something like that. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.